What's up, Internet? It's Riley from No Fun. Let's build a rug making frame. Woo! We're gonna need some 2x4s to start off with. I found all this wood next to the dumpster outside the studio, so I'm gonna build what I can with the least amount of cutting. We're also gonna need a pencil, an awl or a drill bit, a ruler, power driver, a tape measure, and uh, some screws. Corner clamps aren't essential, but will make your life easier if you don't have anyone to help you. I'm gonna use a chop saw, or a normal saw will work if you don't have a fancy one. Finally, we need a hammer, some rug tack strips, and rubberized gloves so you don't stab yourself. You can build any size frame you want. Typically, four foot by four foot is easiest to do because lumber is sold in eight foot lengths. I got all this pre-cut wood out of the alleyway for free, so I'm just gonna use what I ended up with. There's enough to make a frame that's about six feet tall by eight feet wide with enough left over to build height adjustable legs. Oh, hold up. Nearly forgot an important step. Thank you so much. Have a good night. After your frame is laid out, it's time to start screwing it together. If you've done any woodworking before, you can ignore me for a second, but if you haven't, I'll explain. You want to position your bottom beam underneath the side beams and your top beam on top of the side beams. Ideally, you want to pre-drill proper pilot holes throughout your build to prevent your wood from splitting. But since I'm stubborn and this is alleyway lumber, I'm going to roll the dice and use the awl to create tiny starter holes instead. After that, just start screwing it together. Finish all the four corners. Next, we're gonna eyeball the cuts we have to make for the leg supports. That'll probably work. You can set aside this part of the frame while we finish up the legs. Now I'm marking the center of the six foot piece that I'm gonna cut in half to build the legs with. All of the leg supports need to be chopped to 45 degrees as well. The foot sections of the build end up being about two foot long and three foot high. I'm also cutting the edges of these off at a 45 degree angle. It's not necessary, but it looks slightly better and I'll stub my toe on it less. But we got two feet here, one for each side of the frame. But in theory, we're doing, if I can make it balance. Okay. Uh, you get the idea. These go in here for back and forth support. So when you're making a, a rug, you're really pushing against the frame a lot. So these are important. What's up, internet? When we left off, I made most of the cuts necessary for this rug frame. Obviously, these are the wrong size because I didn't measure. So, fresh day. I'm gonna freshly measure these, trim them down. The correct size ended up being one foot on the long side. I think we're back in action now. Uh, keep all these extra parts if you do what I did and instead of measure twice, cut once, measure zero and cut eight times or whatever. But we'll need these later, so that's good. Cool. This is gonna be way better. We just have to screw it all together now. No problem. And this is where my problems begin. You wanna mark out the center of your foot section and drill a screw up through the bottom. Use that screw to mark the center of your leg post and drill that sucker down. Then add your supports. 
At this point, the extremely dried out alleyway lumber I used for the supports and my extreme stubbornness finally caught up to me. Since I was refusing to drill pilot holes, even though I knew that I would solve the problem, I ended up cracking, breaking, and having to recut these pieces over and over. If you get better lumber than me, or just suck it up and drill the pilot holes, you won't have this issue. Roulette split, volume five. Off, oh, no way. I can't believe that. You know what? For a rug, for a rug, that's fine. I'm not doing it again. I'm just not. Okay, it's time to pull out the frame you built earlier and keep putting everything together. It's been going great. Basically, we just gotta screw these legs into the side of this at the height that we want it to be with the idea that it's relatively easy to unscrew the legs to raise it for when your tufting area is down here and then you know put the legs pretty much dead to the floor when you're working up this top. I think I'm just going to fire these milk crates underneath put it at a relatively normal height. Building the legs separately might feel like an extra step but I've found that without the adjustability, you'll inevitably end up crunching your back and wrists really strangely to tuck far off areas in the frame. After hours and hours of working on a rug, your body's gonna feel it. Here I'm pre-drilling the screws into the legs so it's easier to blast the whole thing together without a friend to help me hold it all up. Oh, perfect timing. Can you get a hold it? Uh, yeah, just take, I mean, take your jacket off. Stuff. Sure. I'm down one to go. Put the screws into the legs about one foot apart so the frame's weight is distributed more evenly. It's really quick to loosen just a handful of screws when you need to adjust the height and then mash them back in. If you don't have a friend to help you hold it all together while you do this, you can put one side of the frame against the wall to give yourself something to push against. Get your scraps from earlier, don't throw them away. The reason is we got a lot of lateral wiggly motion and you can use your scraps to stabilize it. See? Like this. Now's a good time to also blast some screws into areas of the frame that need more support. This will help minimize some of that shakiness. Don't forget to add a few going up from the bottom too. Okay, we're almost there. We just have to put the tack strip around the edge. You can find this pre-tacked carpet installation strip at most hardware stores. It comes in four foot lengths. It has nails already inserted in it, so all you have to do is hammer it down. This isn't necessary, but I like to paint mine. I think it looks better and helps remind my dumbass not to grab it and lean it and stab myself over and over. Next, we just gotta lay it around the edge of the frame. All the tacks poke out in one direction. Before you hammer everything down, you wanna make sure that all of your tacks are facing outwards. This is arguably the most important part of the whole build. If your tacks are installed backwards, your tufting cloth will not stick to the frame. If your frame size is leaving you gaps between your four foot tack sections, just mark the exact size strip you'll need to fill in the gap and cut it out. Or 
Or if you want to skip the saw, just score it pretty deeply with a knife. These strips snap pretty easily. If you're filling in a small gap like this, make sure it's attached with at least two nails so it won't shift around. Yes, 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 yes. Just gotta make the yarn holder and then we're done. Take another one of your pieces of scrap wood and attach some eye hooks. These ones are overkill, but they'll work. You need a small gap at the top for the yarn to pass through. I'm gonna hammer these ones out to open them up, but you may need to squeeze your hooks more closed with pliers if they're wide to begin with. I finally learned my lesson. I'm drilling the pilot holes. If your outer hook pokes out slightly further than your inner hook, your yarn will feed more freely. When you're attaching this to the frame, it should be flush with the front so your yarn won't catch on the edge. Okay, that's it. If you have any questions about this build or any other rug making questions, smash them into the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. You could also hit me up on Instagram. It's at no fun press. Please smash the like and subscribe button for more no fun studio videos coming soon. Thanks for watching.